Okay guys, so in this video we are going to talk a little bit about Ajax and how things used to kind of be before we had the Fetch API and then I'm just going to walk you through a very basic way that you can build your own Ajax library. Now this is not perfect by any means but it's there's nothing really all that wrong with it. It will it will do the job. So let's get into it. So basically all I want to cover in this video is to how to make an Ajax library and the note that I want to kind of touch on here is that I've a lot of people will give me the argument that jQuery is still relevant because there are old browsers. Some people have the unfortunate situation of having to support really 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 old browsers and some of them don't actually have the fetch API and so forth so they justify this and say to me tell me that oh yeah we are using jQuery or something that of that nature to support all browsers and I agree it's great if you do that and you can use but you know if you're just using a jQuery for the Ajax then you are in, you're using too much you're rather you're adding too much weight to the page in proportion to what you're actually using you should simply focus on adding the exact thing that you need and some people will then tell me that hey, you can use Axios or some Ajax specific type of uh, library and I go yeah you could do that and that will probably work that it might not be much of an issue but let me show you the most lightweight version of how to create a way of doing Ajax without having to resort back to doing the old school way of doing it because it was absolutely horrible so let's just walk walk you through this. So I created a very very basic native server, uh, node server here. So all it's going to do is it's just going to allow any request from any page and don't ask me why I made this a static file I just did. I, I can't really justify it. I wanted to keep, I, I suppose that what I wanted to achieve in this video is to give you an understanding of how you do things bare bones without any libraries, without anything fancy. You can just do it with the platform itself. Now I'm not saying that you should always do that. I'm just saying that this is an alternative. Learn how to do this so that you can understand why the things that are much nicer are nicer. All right, so here we are, basic server. Here's a very basic index.html file and I have opened said file in this browser or my, as you can see, we're serving this directly from the file system so it's not being served over any server or anything like that. So basically we're importing the script and then it does two requests. So we have a get request here and it's going to return foo or it hits the server and returns a one and then we have a post and that's going to have a payload of foo and bar and that's it basically it returns foo and then something is happening on the page so that's the whole thing right so we're doing a get and a post which you should know is the, the these are the two most common HTTP method types that you have usually you're you're doing for the most part really old legacy systems they almost always use get and post for absolutely everything so Let's look at foo.js where my little library lives. So the first thing we notice here is that I have created a file which is going to simply be a CSS, no not a CSS, a JavaScript closure or a self-invoking function that's going to return a global object called fetchme. And there down here we do the actual call. So this is the interface. All you do is that you do fetchme.get URL and an object called options and then fetch me dot post same thing bunch of options this is heavily inspired by how jQuery used to work back in the day before we had promises before we had all this stuff so let's look at this options object so our options object contains a section called headers where I set the headers that I want so I want to accept application JSON and I want the content type to be set to JSON as well and here's the body so basically as you can see we use the body for both the post and the get but the post is going to use the body and the get is going to ignore it right and then we have these two lovely things here success and error so success is going to get a response and the response has a dot JSON function that returns some JSON and then we're simply going to append an h1 element to the page same thing if we have an error that's basically it. 
So this is our interface. Now I'm going to admit this is not as super nice as some of the really fancy libraries, but I want you to consider this. It will give you basically what you need for almost all your use cases in 104 lines of code. It took me roughly say 15, 20 minutes to build this and it has virtually as good. It, it, it can of course be improved, but I'm saying that it weighs absolutely nothing. It, the, the, if you have no other reason to use these larger frameworks than just doing this basic thing that I just showed you, then this is a, an option. Not saying that you have to do it, just saying that you can. Sorry, I was lying to you. It was actually 80 lines of code. All right, 80 lines of code. That's a pretty good deal. Let's look at the return object. So we have a get and a post on an object that returns. And so that expects a URL and some maybe options. It might be options. Then we do object.assign. So what we do here is that we take whatever options we got and we copy over basically so we can explicit we could in theory if you wanted to copy over the method in the get basically set the method to whatever you want but we simply default to using method get so this temp object here is just going to be the configuration with the method get that's it and then we have this magical function here that does something it's called fetch me which takes a url and our temp temporary object same thing goes for the post where we simply copy over all of the properties that we need to be have as defaults inside of this fetch me function and whatever is coming from the maybe object is going to as i said overwrite this object here and it's all going to be accumulated in this temp variable cool so that's much we have said let's look at the fetch method or the fetch me method so it takes a url some maybe options oh and then we have some co object called options which is basically just an object that I declared, which is dirt simple. It takes in an object and it tries to simply, it checks if we it got an object or well, basically, a, well, not an object, but a truthy value. If it doesn't, it just it creates a default options. And then all it does is it extracts all the stuff that it needs in order to do, to do its thing. And then it returns these properties on an object so that it's a little bit of error checking here so that you get some reasonable defaults if you're not passing certain things in. Cool. So then the fetch me does the XML HTTP request. This is the object that used to be the case, like this for the juniors out there, this is how you used to start doing Ajax. It was a little bit, as you can see, it's not that intuitive. So XHTTP, and then you have this on ready state change. Basically, this is a function. So what's happening here is that if the ready state is set to four, then you you basically, the request is done. I'm not gonna go into details about the ready state. You can go and look that up if you're interested, but just for the sake of, for the sake of this discussion, if the ready state is set to four, that means that the request is finished. And then you have the status that says two, if it's equal to 200, then all we do is that we grab the options that is in the, are in the global scope. This function is now reaching out of itself and grabbing this object here. So it's gonna grab the success callback and create a new response object that takes the status and the response text. Now the response text is, as, is on this X HTTP object. So the response text is going to contain the text that came from the server. And if the, we are, are in ready state four and we have something that is over 400 or the status is over 400, that means that something went wrong and we simply return, we use the error callback with the same response object. Let's look at the response object. So here's the response object. So it took in the status we saw earlier. So we have the status. And then it takes in some data. It, it basically the string that we got from the server, right? And then all it does is the, uh, has is a JSON and a text function. So if you say response.txt, you simply get the raw text. If you say response.json, it tries to parse the data into JSON. And as you can see, there's no error handling and stuff here. But as I said, this can be improved, of course. But what I wanted wanted to show you with this little video of mine is that with just 80 lines of code, I create, I, I basically got 
80%, almost all of the value that jQuery's Ajax library and so forth brings to the table. Now you can of course argue that there might be cases where this won't do and I agree this is not perfect but I just wanted to open your minds uh, to the idea that some things that may seem very complex and very valuable and some is not necessarily all that complicated to build yourself. Now I'm not once again I'm not saying that you should do this this exact thing I'm showing you here. I just wanted to show you that this is a very simple way that you can create your own Ajax library that will work basically in any in almost any browser. So it, it's actually this simple. And then we have this thing here where we do xhttp.open. So we get the method. So we open and then we simply use the URL that we were passed. And this is actually where this magic starts happening. This is where the actual method call or the network call starts. And then we have this thing here, set headers. Let's look at this. All the set headers function is doing is that it takes in the, uh, the HTTP object, all the headers that we want to set. It simply loops over all of the headers and sets each request header on the HTTP object and returns that object. It's just a it's it's that simple so that we can actually specify that we want these headers to be ex added to to the request we're going to make, right? So that's it. And then if the op if there's a body, we simply JSON stringify the option body and send it. Otherwise, we just call send without a body. That's it. This is basic. This is a very basic implementation of an Ajax library in 80 lines of code. I hope you found it useful. Have a great day.